down. Move it in, moving around. Disco lady. Yeah. And I'm walking in Memphis. And I'm walking about 10 feet off a bill. And I'm walking in Memphis. Walking in Memphis. What's that? What else? Uh, yeah. I don't know the rest of that damn song. But anyway, y'all get the drift. What's up? If you can hear me, let me know. <clears throat> it's your man Rico the Opinionist. This is Rico. And uh, I found me a new spot, y'all. I can just come and chill and talk. And, <sighs> and of course, too, it's, it, hey, it's, it's winter. It's January. So the weather is nice and crisp. But in case y'all... Uh, didn't know I have this little book that I that I this short story that I have um it's called the greatest pain I ever felt a conversation with the absent biological father who never wanted to be found it's only ten dollars it's a uh, in a pbf I mean, I'm sorry pdf format where you can uh you know, if you hit me on that cash app dollar sign Rico the opinionist o-p-i-n-i-o-n-i-s-t uh, and when you send it to me in the little message part, put your email address and I can email it to you right, right then and there. Uh, so y'all know what's going on. If you're from Memphis, you know, you can appreciate this video, but if you, if you're a supporter of Memphis and you love the city, you know, you know even though I've lived in Dallas Fort Worth the past 15 years, I've, of course I've come home a lot cause my folks are still there. And I and I'm still Hollywood and Springdale. You hear me? The North, Hyde Park, Douglas, Fairwater, New Chicago, Frazier. I guess the Bay Area. But I'm all, but me. I'm you know Hollywood, Springdale, the Jackson with the Kentucky Fried Chicken, and uh, and AutoZone. Yeah, that that North. So uh, you know went to Hollywood Elementary School, Well Station, Cypress Junior High School. Graduate from Frazier. Yeah, I'm, you dig, Noah. So, y'all spread this live, by the way. Because there's some things, I, I'm kind of reiterate some things I've probably said in other lives. But I think a lot of us don't understand about race. R-A-C-E. I think we've become so intelligent and try to be so multicultural that we don't even know what race is anymore. You know, we got black folks look like me and Whoopi Goldberg. Well, my grandma, she probably German, so I, I'm, I'm a pinch a quarter of a nickel uh, German. There's something wrong with the African-American, the black American. And, uh, you know, we've had scholars to talk to us about this, but we ignore them because we're trying to believe the dream. Mm. Well, most recently, uh, and by the way, the, the history... The history of policing in America has always been controversial, right? In the beginning, um, for newly freed Africans in this country, they had this thing called patty rollers. They would go around and check you. And uh, two things, they were there to check white people, to protect white people's property and to uh, arrest homeless Africans, uh, enslaved, uh, free, newly freed African, arrest them. They didn't have anywhere to live, so they were harassed and harassed and beat and all of that stuff. And then uh, um, check their freedom papers and all. It was a mess. Slave catchers did all that stuff as well. But the patty rollers were, the, I guess, the beginning of policing in America, or the policing of black folks and, and quote, and others. So we've gone through all types of police murders in the black community. We, we can start from, man, Mike Brown, Eric Garner, Felice Castillo. Uh, and y'all y'all know the rest of the names. I, I know the names, but I'm not going to go down that long list. There's so many. Um, but we, we're familiar with the the murdering of unarmed black men and women, black women. Shout out to, uh, rest in peace, uh, Tatiana Jefferson. Uh, but you know, most recently Memphis had uh, a very brutal murder to occur at the hands of, of the Memphis Police Department.
very brutal uh, according to reports well according to the picture that's flowing around all over social media uh, the brother Tyree Nichols 29 years old skate skater he's a skater and he had a son five years old and I'm getting this new information from the press conference I watched today with Ben Crump and his co-attorney uh, and then all the so-called Memphis Negro leaders, the Negro leader of the NAACP, Van Turner, and he named every Negro state representative, city council, who I'm tell y'all, I'll get to that in a minute. And he had the family up there. And, um, and they had already watched the video because that's, that's the big thing that's going on. They're taking their time to show the video. And, and I, I am one who understands process, who understands the process. So per the press conference today, it was headed by Ben Crump, you know, the civil rights attorney. He, uh, he said in about one or two weeks, they should let the public see the video. And I'm going to kind of go back and forth on this because a lot of stuff I want to get out. And I'm going to take my time. I hope you all got a minute. And, um, and so people are wondering, where's the tape, where's the tape, where's the videotape, where's the footage? And uh, based on uh, the press conference they held today, uh, one of the attorneys, I think the, the white attorney, his name is Antoine Tony Ono, I don't know, I think he's Italian. He was saying they, they beat him like a pinata. He was screaming for his mother, yelled his mother's name three times. Yeah, it sounded like George Floyd. And the question was posed, where was the de-escalation? Why so brutal? Why so rough? And uh, the ste his stepfather said, you no, know, gave clarity on for those who keep, keep asking, why did he run? And the father was like, hey, he wasn't running because he had an illegal gun or he was trying to toss out some dope. He was running to, you know, running to save his life. He was scared for his life. And uh, by all accounts, the way his family and, and uh, I guess, friends and co-workers described this brother, he was um, very likable, lovable, giving, uh, free-spirited, kind-hearted dude who worked, and he loved to skateboard, and he loved to take pictures as a hobby. And they showed a video of him uh, skateboarding. He was actually pretty damn good. And I didn't get a chance to see any of his pictures. I would like to see the photos because there are some people who are natural photographers. Shout out to my man, Adrian Tyrell. Adrian uh, there who taught himself how and to just take pictures with a lens. There in Memphis, he, he does a great job. Um, and so I like to see some of his pictures. Um... If, if I were to kind of go over the press conference, they didn't really go into heavy detail about what they watched in the video because they showed the family. Oh, yeah, by the way, earlier today, they had all the skater friends to come out and support. A lot of people showed up to the Memphis City Hall today to support him. Uh, a lot of skater buddies came up there as they were showing the family the video of how their son, their brother, uh, their father was brutally murdered by five members of the Memphis Police Department who were allegedly reportedly in unmarked cars and they tried to lie that they tried to put them over for a DUI <laughs> that you know there's a whole lot of cover up was going on and guess what the news came out today that even two EMTs from the fire department was fired because they were negligent they tried to help in the cover up oh my god and so it came out, it was five black dudes, right? And of course, on social media, social media, you had those people who were like, hey, it's five black men, so, well, y'all ain't gonna ride, y'all ain't gonna bust windows and all of that. And so, I, one of the guys I responded to and I told him, look, uh, due to the fact that it's been brought out that there were five black male, five black officers, black men, who bludgeoned, who beat this man to death. If you look at his, his, his hospital picture, his folks put a picture of him and laying in the hospital with tubes everywhere, 
uh, I think he was on a breathing machine. And he, uh, broken neck, broken jawbone, broken everything, eye this big. And I, I compared the way he looked to that of Emmett Till. It wasn't as grotesque or as, as bad as Emmett Till, but it's the same spirit of it. You know, Emmett Till, 14 years old, who was beaten by a, by a white savage mob in 1955. And this young brother, 29 years old, uh, Tyree, Nichols was beaten by a, a hate-filled black and blue mob. You know, and, and, and he was six foot two, 145 pounds, and it came out in the press conference that he was suffering with Crohn's disease and he had lost a lot of weight. So you got five people beating, bludgeoning a, a tall, really tall, skinny dude. And, uh, and again, they... they in the video, the, the parents said that he yelled for his mother three times. He was just a couple of minutes away from home. The beating took place like for three minutes. And so, let me go back to the what I call the grandstanding part of it. And you know, I, I you know I don't care for preachers and politicians, but I but but uh, Ben Crump, I guess he had to do what he had to do to try to get the point across. Uh, he's going to get them a payoff. He's going to get them some money good because they deserve $150 million. If that, I hope that's, I hope that is what, what they're going to be asking for. But you know, it's just me, uh, plus some pensions, all of that. And that's what we need to start asking for. Stop just, stop getting the money from the taxpayers, get the money from the people who has committed the crime. That is the cops. They need their savings. They need their pension, the police pension, everything. And that's what so-called leaders should be pushing for. And also should be pushing for the end of this qualified immunity. And because they really don't, they don't have any fear. And so the folks who were saying, well, now they're black. So, well, no, it doesn't matter because it's still blue. It's still blue. That's what we're, that's what we're battling against. And I often compare Memphis to apartheid South Africa. When a hundred white folks is ruling over 10,000 blacks. In South Africa, and, and they even were over. They were uh, in control of the police forces there. And y'all, y'all saw the old videotapes. You can see them even today. How the black police officers in South Africa and the soldiers were beating and whipping fellow black, fellow Africans. So it's the same thing in America. Yeah, you got black cops, but they have that same hatred, that same disdain for black descent that. that a lot of the police officers across the country have for black people. Ben Crump brought up a good brought up a brought up something that made that is the truth. When he posed the question, "What was the de-escalation?" Damn, y'all had him down. They tased him. Uh, they had him restrained, according to Ben Crump, and they beat him. So he couldn't fight back. He was literally defenseless. And so he said, "But damn." Y'all know how to de-escalate when y'all are rescuing white folks. And it is the truth. They do. Police officers, and, and, and here's the stupidity or the ignorance or the naivete of black Americans. They need more sensitivity training. They need more training. No, they don't. They already have their script. They know what to do. When it comes to blacks, all rules go out the window. When it comes to black men, we already know what time it is with them. And they all have that in their minds. Yeah, I said all until you prove me wrong. Because a lot of you love to say, well, not all cops are bad. Yeah. Unless you get to a press conference or at least anonymously point out and call out the bad cops, you are a bad cop too. And I've always had that attitude. I, you know, you don't know who you're going to get when you get pulled over. And that's disgusting. So, and you want to tell black men, stop running, comply, tell black people, stop running. Let me tell y'all something. Did y'all know that every race in this country has, has run from the police? Whites, no, whites, immigrants, no, Hispanics, Jews, Asians, everybody has run. Or they continue to still run from the police. We've all, we've watched cops for 25 years they were naked white men with meth, not only running from the cops, but they were fighting the cops, and the cops still were able to put them in a police car without a scratch. You can't even be mentally ill and be black. Because I've seen cops 
talk down mentally ill white folks. Come on now. You want to do that? We want to help you. I mean, just, oh my God. But let you be a black man wielding a bullet knife. They, they, all there stand around and do a firing squad on you. But a white man can have a gun and a cop don't even draw his gun. See, y'all, y'all understand if you black, if you, if you black and American, you're awake and you're, you're true about it. What I'm saying is not, is not unfamiliar to you. It's these ones who try to be so multicultural. I don't care you got a white wife. I don't care if you got a white boyfriend. I don't care you got mixed kids with white folks. If you don't understand racism, white supremacy, its agenda, its purpose, everything else would just, would only confuse you. Shout out to Brother Neely Fuller. I don't care about that. You made that choice as a way of trying to survive under white racism. So you said, you figured, if I can't beat them, I might as well join them and marry them and reproduce with them. Yeah, I said it. Because that's how we're behaving. And then, when they act in their nature against blacks, we get upset. When this gonna stop? Because, because I even wrote in my post, when a, no, I, this is what I wrote. When are black men gonna stand up to end this? I'm putting it on black men. We're the ones who catching the brunt of all of the, all of the criminal justice system. We, we're top of the list of incarceration, uh, being murdered by the cops, uh, child support, you name it, uh, uh, sentencing, <laughs> unfair sentencing, all of that. But black men have yet to form a coalition across this country to fight these laws, to fight the brutality. We were like, we're waiting on Jesus or something. We're waiting, we're waiting on the women to do it. I don't know what's going on with black men, but the cowardice behavior has to stop. Let me go back to that press conference. You know, there's some things that were said that I didn't care for. You know, first, I didn't care for them introducing them all those sorry ass city council members, the sorry ass state representatives. I didn't care for that. But y'all know what I didn't care about the most in that press conference? Ben Crump and his little white co-counsel kept yelling this phrase. Now, again, it was a black man who was beaten to death. Young black man in that video. Um, It was a black man in Eric Garner that was murdered. Felice. Uh, Castillo was a black man. Mike Brown was a black man. And they keep, and uh, who else? George Floyd is a black man. But these so called leaders y'all got, a lot of them are Greek affiliated and Boule initiated. And these so called intelligent black folks who are supposed to be the leaders, you know what they always say that pisses me off and it should piss you off too? Well, we have these things happening to black and brown. I'm so over that. And I want to know, I, what strategy are you trying to pull when you say that? Because there was nobody brown getting their ass beat by the police. As a matter of fact, let me tell me share something with y'all. Here in Dallas, a year or two before COVID hit in 20, 2018 or 19, there were some cops that shot, I think he was might have been drunk, a Mexican here, right? Let me tell you how that played out. It was some phone calls made. All I know, I'm hearing on the news, uh, leadership in the Mexican government sent letters to American leadership and Texas leadership to say, y'all need to get on that and take care of that. And within two weeks, this shit was handled. Did y'all hear me? And see, let me, let me share with y'all the significance of that. We're so busy saying, I ain't from Africa. Well, you hear black folks say, I wasn't born in no Africa. See, when, when we, we've allowed everyone else to talk us out of our lineage, out of our association with the continent. So when something happens to us over here, nobody's coming, picking up the phone from anywhere else to look out for us. Got it? But every other group can call another country who they're still affiliated with to get on the phone with the governor, with the president and everything else. Y'all didn't even hear what I just said. That the Mexican government, high officials in the Mexican government called high officials in the United States government and the Texas government and got that handled. See, when stuff happens to us, we're so busy being stupid and we're rejecting not just, no, I'm going to say all 54 country, countries on the continent of Africa. I'm not African. So we've been talked out of our backup. 
I know it's so that goes over a lot of y'all here. I know it's all right. <sighs> we gonna learn one day. We keep saying black and brown. In Memphis, Tennessee, oh, about t 15 years ago or so, probably longer than that. It was there was a, a large gathering about five or six thousand Hispanics and Latinos at the Lorraine Motel Civil Rights Museum. They were a part of, y'all remember when all the Latinos and Hispanics across the country shut America down when they walked out of the warehouses and the factories and the jobs? And then now what time did they say, black and brown, black and brown people are mistreated in wages, black and brown people. They never said. Whenever something happened, even with that shooting that I just told y'all about, that Mexican in, in, in Dallas, here in Dallas, not one Mexican leader in, da in, in Dallas or from Mexico said, well, this could happen. This always happening to black and brown. They never said it. They just spoke in Spanish and they said only his Mexicans and, and Latinos. And I don't understand why you, I'm not going to curse. I don't understand why you people who are supposed to be intelligent continue to say black and brown when there's no such thing as a black and brown food. It's black people. Dr. John Henrik Clark told us years ago, Africans, we have no friends. We have no allies. All we have is ourselves. Go look it up on YouTube. Read his books. But we still keep playing these games. And we want, we want the enemy, the oppressor of our people, historic and current, to come to our rescue when they misbehave with us. So all this time we told them, we need more black lawyers. We need more black judges. We need but No, you don't. Because all they do is they get in the system and do as the system tells them to do. There are no more Thurgood Marshalls and, and the athletes or whatever. There are no more Muhammad Ali's. There are no more Jim Joneses. There are no more John Carlos, the brother who threw the black fist up at the 1968 Olympics. There's no more of those. These are all bald and sold, multicultural, diversified Negroes. And they're the ones that y'all look up to as your, your leaders. Y'all the ones, they're the ones who you elect as state representative. They get up there and all they talk about is LGBT and immigrant rights. I know I'm sounding like a hater to some of y'all, but forgive me. God gave me these words. Now debate him or her. And so we're going to have to mature when it comes to race. And then there was a question posed up in there. And let me tell y'all something else. See, um, y'all continue to listen. Let me tell y'all something else. It's at least that press conference. You know, they introduced the old funk ass, uh, the little lazy, in a, in a, uh, ineffective elected officials and supposed community leaders. Now, I think the, can the, the, the Memphis activists are the legit ones because the activists are different from the so-called political leaders. The activists are the ones that got this ball rolling. So shout out to the Memphis activists, ones who are in the streets, the ones on the ground, the ones with the dreads. Those, those, those are the activists. But the community, so-called community leaders and the so-called political leaders, they work with the system. They trying to get them grants and all that kind of shit. They trying to form partnerships. So they ain't worth a damn. We keep voting for nothing for those people. But uh, that black and brown shit y'all keep saying. Stop saying that. Now let me let me make this clear. Because a lot of a lot of y'all be in Memphis and all over be trying to have these coalitions with these liberal white folks. I guess that's all right, but. But Memphis has over 500,000 black people. Y'all don't think that's enough people to get something done? Y'all still have to coalesce with the minority? It's a really... I'm going to borrow something that Ed Reed, who was about to be the head coach, football coach at Bethune-Cookman. Ed Reed, the NFL legend, pro bowler. He said at Bethune-Cookman, there are some broken mentalities. Memphis, Tennessee, black Dallas, black Chicago, black Detroit, all the black parts of all 50 states in the cities, they, they do suffer from a broken mentality. But I can help you get that mentality together, but you're not going to listen to me because it's not coming from Barack, no, Barack Obama. No, uh, you're not coming from a politician or a celebrity that you like. So I'm going, I'm just going talking through you right now. Um, 
I can give you, I can tell you how you get your, your broken mentality fixed. It's called the Willie Lynch Letter. Read that. Read the book, Miseducation of the Negro. And also throw in a, you know, a Black Labor, White Wealth by Dr. Claude Anderson. Those three documents right there, I swear, you, you will be feel yourself becoming de-niggered, de-negroed with every chapter read. You'll start seeing yourself, feeling yourself, wake up. You'll start feeling like I feel. Now, I don't know that because it's a little pressure when you're actually awakened. Not woke, but awakened. You start seeing things. It's almost like taking that red pill out of the matrix. You start seeing things for what they really are. So that means, you know, you're really going to work. And you understand, you draw that line. So when I say stop saying black and brown, I mean that. Politically, it's stupid because no other group, nobody, no other group says Asian and blacks, black and brown. Asians got all these rights. And by the way, y'all stop that Asian or Asian hate that's going on in San Francisco. Y'all cut that out. Y'all ought to be ashamed. But uh, someone is always bringing up, you know, the cops is killing us and. And uh, all this black people killing each other, all this black on black crime, black on black killing, and all this. Let me tell y'all something. Stop saying that. That is a separate issue from when gov government employees who are tax paid, they are hired to protect and serve. They're not hired to specifically target unarmed black men and vulnerable black people. So you sound really stupid and cowardice when you try to mesh the two. When black people kill black people, they get arrested and they go to trial, they get convicted and they take their ass to jail. When cops kill black people, especially black men, we get the runaround. They get time paid leave off. And then if they get convicted, they get nine years, six years, 18 months, 32 months. <laughs> they don't even get the full 50 years that they deserve. So y'all, to, so to you jackasses that keep saying, well, you know what, they want to bring up black people killing everybody. Who gives a shit? Whites kill whites. Asians kill Asians. Y'all saw today or yesterday morning. Asians kill Asians. Everybody kill everybody in their racial groups. But it's somehow when a cop attacks a white or a Mexican, they, no one ever brings up, well, you know, Mexicans kill Mexican too. Um, so we're so busy worrying about the cops. We need to worry about that. No, they don't insult the, each other or insult uh, 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 the victims of police brutality or murder. And I need you black folks to put those goddamn Bibles down and pick up some books that actually, actually empower you. Again, I'll start you off with two, three. Read the, the Willie Lynch letter. Read uh, Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. And read Black Labor, White Wealth by, by, Car by uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. That'll get you on your way. Because some of you have been buried in Negro sand and a Negro sand for so long that you don't even know which way it's up. Shout out to Richard Pryor's movie. That's really funny. And stop saying that. That's stupid. It's, it's just dumb whenever you say that. We're going to handle the black on black. I guess everybody else going to handle their race on race issue too. But stop throwing it in when cops murder somebody black and especially black males it is a separate issue and it should be laws in place to get them appropriately punished and so black men get off your ass please get off your ass yeah we, we the pew research the, the pew research center says that black women are the most reserved the most religious in this country of all the groups and black women are 96 percent occupants in the black church but it seems like black men are the main ones waiting on jesus to come solve their problems and that has to change because it doesn't make any sense how we're just sitting here just standing by attacking the wrong issues instead of the ones that's actually hurting us like this criminal justice system. You got a lot of black men who are attorneys, criminal justice, environmental, constitutional attorneys. Don't lift a finger to help black men. Don't lift a goddamn finger. 
Then we got a lot of black men who work these great jobs who could actually help out other black men, but they're bought into this whole, these, these stereotypes and these myths about black men as if you're white. No black men don't want to work. They want to do that. They do. But stop trying to treat them like a dog and offer them five and seven dollars. Hell. And they don't smoke no more weed, no more than any other group. And that's me telling you. I smell weed all the time. It gets on my nerves. I'm not talking like I don't see the stuff that y'all see. But we have to think broader. Because, see, what's going to happen is, you know, we're still playing these games and waiting around. We're not protecting each other. See, every time I look around, we tell them, we need to protect black women. Now, who the fuck going to protect black men? Y'all got sons. But y'all going to protect black women over your boys? How the hell are we going to have a society and all the men are dead or they're cowards or they're homosexuals? I mean, goddamn black men, black men, black American male. What's going on? We can't sit here and wait on somebody else to do what we are capable of doing. But the one thing about it is the weirdest thing. I can't I can't convince y'all to, to get involved in this in this work as it relates to racism. But as soon as a football game comes on TV, as soon as an NBA game comes on TV, you can't get you Negroes to close your goddamn mouths. Y'all in tune. Y'all know every score, every stat, every move, every run, every jump, every dunk, every slide in. Y'all know all of that. But it can't get you guys to get active when it comes to saving your own goddamn lives. That is That in itself is referred to as a broken mentality. You know, the cops only kill the weak. They continue to do it. Because we don't, we don't put up a stance. We don't. And I'm saying weak, I'm a black man too. And anything can happen to any one of us. But brothers, we got all these divisions. Yeah. And we're working against each other. But put sports on TV? Shit. That's all y'all know. Oh yeah, and strip clubs. Shit that don't matter. And I understand why y'all get into sports because it's easy to debate about sports. Because uh, you don't have to do any work except for talk shit and make bets and all that. And go to get these white races all your money and plan, paying 50 $60 for tickets. And all of the NFL coaches told their players, if you stand up to uh, on behalf of black men being murdered by the cops, all of y'all going to be fired. Y'all acting like y'all didn't hear none of that. And what I'm saying, yeah, I'm talking to you, black men, because the shit got to stop. I don't, and I, I'm not talking to you like, well, we need to protect black. Men. I don't give a shit about that. They're protected. The government t- protects them. They look out for each other. So much so, they look out for each other when they're doing wrong. I'm talking about when are we gonna start protecting each other? And sometimes from now, when are we going to protect each other, black men? Because this, this, these shootings. And so I know but Memphis, just like all, all the black sections of America, got a crime problem. We can stop that. We know who doing it. A lot of y'all sons or the baby mama who you don't fool with, her boys. You, y'all know who these little bastards are. But we will not take, take the lead on bringing peace into our own lives. I believe that we're truly waiting on Jesus Christ to come back. It's the weirdest thing to witness. So I just want I just want to get on and share these things with y'all tonight. I'm not gonna hold y'all all night. You know, stop saying, well, what, what about black people and, and killing each other? Stop saying that that's stupid, because they're separate it's separate issues. And stop saying, well, black and well, this they always doing stuff to black and brown. So that's what your your politicians be saying. Because they they think that the Hispanics are gonna vote for them. No, they only vote for their own. Every group takes care of their own except for black people. What kind of niggas are y'all? I mean, where y'all come from? That you don't look out for yourselves economically, politically, educationally. Your schools, the, the schools in these black neighborhoods are trash. But yet y'all still waiting for somebody to come solve their problem. And y'all spending money every goddamn day. Paying taxes and everything. And still... Watching Germantown and Bartlett and Cordova <laughs> reap all the benefits of you in Memphis of your tax dollars. It's the weirdest thing. 
But y'all let me know if I'm saying something that's uh that that's not original. It's the weirdest behavior. There's something wrong with, with Negroes in America. There's something wrong with Negroes in Memphis. I mean, it's just weird. It's weird. There's so many things that we need. But we'll go and pay $300 for a damn Gucci belt. It's the weirdest thing. But then, you know, because one of my professors told me this years ago. He was talking about, you know, black folks tend to pay for what they want, but they beg for what they need. And that's Memphis, Tennessee. You know, black and Dallas, too. Dallas, the same. Dallas got some shithole neighborhoods and their representatives are Democrats. And Memphis is up shit's crease because a lot of your representatives in the black neighborhoods are black and Democrat. So, y'all, we got to have some real conversations about my hometown. They need to have some here in Dallas, too. They keep voting the same old sorry do-nothings. Same old. Because they went to your church. Or they're your part of your fraternity. Or they came to your, you know them from high school. No, 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 no. Those days are over. You need some people who are not afraid to speak up and speak out and vote, you know, vote your way as the voter. And most importantly, get a goddamn agenda together and present to these people when they're running for office. Tell them, come look at my neighborhood. You see what we need. We need at least $75 million worth of neighborhood improvement funds. So employ the people so they can help build it. And also, we need businesses there to clean us. Uh, a grocery store, a hospital, mental health facility, outpatient as well as inpatient. That's how it's set up here in Dallas. Each neighborhood has its own stuff. And Memphis, you know, all y'all worrying about is where the next pod is. All this stuff that's needed in my hometown. And then y'all going to vote for the... Oh, anyway, I, y'all know how y'all vote terribly at home. You know, they vote terribly here too. You know, and, and again... <laughs> I find it most amazing and most disingenuous when you have black people who don't live in North Memphis anymore. Uh, let me see, who is this? Jonathan says, no disrespect, but where is the media on this? It should be all over the TV if media really cared about brutality. I know it's the same thing, Jonathan. Hell, yeah, man, that's a good question. They had, they talked about it. It's been on for the past week or so. They've been talking about it, bro. But I, I'm talking to us as black people, and they're in Memphis. You know, <laughs> Memphis is 65% black, but act like they're 5% of the population. The, as, as Ed Reed said about Bethune Cookman College, there's a there's some broken mentality in my hometown. It's broken mentality in Black Dallas too. It's 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 the weirdest thing to witness. It's almost sad. People just act helpless, just like in Black Chicago and Black Detroit and oh, what's that Black area? If there's Black sections of all these fifty states where Black folks at, it's supposed to be low income in the city, you know. Robert is 73%, and they, so they act like 3%. And we don't even show up for stuff. Damn. Se- Robert, where you get those numbers at? I don't think it's 73%. Because that will even be worse. That is apartheid South Africa. <laughs> and you and, and that's embarrassing. You got a, a hick white mayor and a, a, a tails and a crip keeper as the congressman of a 97% black congressional district. Come on, man. Folks been laughing at Memphis for years, and I'm tired of it. So, but anyway, um, if anybody want to come in and just ask me some questions, or I want to hear your thoughts about this whole police brutality and, and people's behaviors and attitudes, there's a green or a red button right there. Press, and I'll talk to you if you want to come in. Uh, you want to press that little button and come in real quick, I'll talk to you. And do me a favor and share this live. Don't forget to purchase my, my little book there. It's only $10. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. Conversational absent biological father never want to be found. 
it's, it's about when I found out about my biological father by accident at age 22 and how he really didn't want to see me. You know, so it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting read. It's only 50 pages. Dollar sign Rico the Opinionist. And if you hit me up, please send an email. It's, a, it's in a PDF format. And I can just email it to you right then and there. But if anybody on here would like to uh, hit me up, talk to me, I'll talk to you. Press that little green or red button. I'll invite you in. <sighs> but if not, it's cool. You know, and when I'm talking, that mean I hate my hometown. You know, Memphis is like a drunk uncle. I'll say some things about it out of frustration, but you can't say a word about my hometown. Because Memphis has a lot of great things about it. You know, I find myself thinking about it. Even though I've been here for 15 years and Dallas-Fort Worth is awesome. It is. It is a great getaway from a place like Memphis. It is. If you want to come out here and just breathe and partake in some of the suburbs, some of the beautiful parks and, and the uh and the waters and the, and the nightlife and all that. Dallas is awesome. And then three and a half hours, four hours away, you got Houston, another me megatropolis. It's awesome, but it's not your home. It's not my hometown. You know, I, I, and a lot of ideas that I have here as far as community service, you know, I'd rather do them at home. You know, because I, I, at home is, is where the heart is and where, you know, uh, Giving back should start at home, you know, and I, and I appreciate my stay here. I, I like it here a lot. I really do. I love it here. But I can't. But my the way my spirit is, the way I like to be free and all that, I I can't go back because Memphis is suffocating. Even when I'm there visiting family members, just home for a week or not even see a week or three days, it's suffocating. And cause I, and it's not because of white folks. I mean, I look at the behavior of blacks in Memphis. They, are, they, they really run around like a bunch of Negro zombies and slaves, making white people feel special. I'm like, there's something wrong with niggas there. <sighs> you know, but uh, and you know, I think they're 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 kind of pushing back on. I want to show the video because they're afraid that this might enact that change that's really needed. See, when those when those young adults, those people from the hood, the real community activists, the real ones came in and and, and held up the Memphis Arkansas Bridge, that was God moving them. That was that was the real activists. They want those punk ass affiliated Greek affiliated uh, homosexual leaders. They were the real ones. The, the folk, it was real. There was real black folks on that bridge, and I was proud of them. And then all of a sudden, the, the police chief then tried to pretend like he was on their side, and and then they brought out the little black, the little gay Black Lives Matter guys talking at you know their their scripted conversation. Well, what we need is someone at the table. Ah, uh, we need someone at the table and someone in these rooms to have to to be able to express uh, on behalf of the people. And one of the guys said, and he said, because you know this is going on for black and brown and, and minorities and other people and one, one of the hood guys said this ain't about no everybody else goddamn it's about black people that's not what i'm talking about and then uh the little, the little black black lives matter gay dude gonna try to get smile with him yeah but i'm in the rooms so oh man i could have jumped to that damn tv uh robert lee said the largest memphis racial ethnic groups are black 64 that's what i'm saying 64.4 percent followed by whites 24 hispanics are seven percent yeah that's what i'm saying we're the we're the goddamn majority and act like and as they say in the, in, the, in the movie the color purple we act like waiters at our own dinner tables the thing is yeah you got a lot of black faces in those places but y'all keep voting in these black greeks and these black gays they have no interest in in Memphis being like an Atlanta, a boss city ran by competent and intelligent blacks who 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 mean the best for even so called poor blacks. I'm not saying it about Atlanta, but at least the poor blacks are inspired by Atlanta. The poor blacks in Memphis like they're on their own. Like everybody like that suckling off of them. They're they're living off of the poor blacks in Memphis. And I don't like that. Everybody, Memphis is a city is big enough and small enough where everybody can come up. It's plenty of money that come through Memphis. Billions of dollars annually in tax dollars. They take that money and they give it to a few. Give it to a few. 
And those people that y'all think is cool, the president of LTLC, the president of NAACP, all of them on the take. And that's what's wrong with black America. Get rid of these lame-ass, bought-off, affiliated-ass, black, so-called black political leaders. They've been selling us out for the past 75 years. And get rid of them. Get somebody with the last name Muhammad or Ekin or Akunde or some kind of African last name. Get somebody. Get those folks. Get the real ones. You know, y'all have to vote differently. But definitely, if y'all want to start the catalyst, make sure Judge Joe Brown is the mayor. If y'all don't do anything else in Memphis, make sure Judge Joe Brown is the mayor. They're trying to get these old, these uh, my friend Mary Max will call them, these er Negroes. Ah, I think what we can do in the city. Ah, I think there are things that could be done that's beneficial to blacks, minority, people of color, uh, marginalized groups. Ah. Anybody that talks like that, do not vote for them. Ah, uh, I think that women, uh, people of color, uh, black and brown, ah, uh, don't vote for those Negroes. Do not. Because when they start mentioning everybody else over you and you're in a majority black city, do not support them. Do not talk to them. Do not vote for them. Do y'all hear me? Don't. Because they're the ones who are going in those rooms and selling you out. Ah, uh, well, I think uh, Memphis, uh, when they, if they pronounce it Memphis, uh, Tennessee, ah, uh, my, my friend Mary Max referred to me as the er Negroes, ah, uh, ah, uh, well, I'm saying, ah, uh, that thing, ah, uh, don't, don't vote for them. They're the ones. So get somebody who's talking about something strong and building. Bring the real ones. Vote for the real ones. Uh, uh, Robert said it's hard to vote to um, elect individuals with the last name of Muhammad or an African name because of the political machine. Well, um, Judge Joe Brown pointed out that those Dabo machines are fixed. And uh, he said that there are machines there, Robert, that, that was bought by the county that they don't even use. So, but that's, that's something that black Memphis can get on and can demand. Go to the county commission or, or, or what's it called it? The Shelby County Election Committee, Committee and say, we need, but y'all need to go by the thousands up there and hold press conferences and say, we want the, we want these Dabo machines out of here and get on your county commissioner, wherever he or she is and say, we don't want those old machines. We want the new machine that's been sitting in the warehouse for damn near 10 years. We want those machines. That's how you do it. You have to work together in groups. Yeah. And I know it's a lot of people who are beaten down and downtrodden. You know, but that's a lot of young people who want to be involved, but they don't know what to do. They got them old bastards there. We just need to vote Democrat. You just need to vote Democrat. You know, man, just get out of here and just make sure you vote. Vote for what? You know, but if you're going to vote, be educated on and understand the system. Hell, we haven't even mastered race yet. Let alone, so no way we'll have the intelligence to even deal with the, the, the intricacies of politics. Yeah, I said it. But anyway, y'all, I think y'all, I, I think I got everything off my chest. Y'all be cool. Uh, Mary Max called me when this video is over. Y'all don't forget, I'm on YouTube. I got to put new videos up there. This is just one of my rare visits. Cause I, I figured this was a Memphis thing that I need to share. And, uh, and so this is my dear letter to Memphis. And let's uh, continue to demand justice for Tyree Nichols. And, and let's, be, let's begin to build a fence around other black males and black men in that, in that city and across the country. But particularly in Memphis. And need to come together for real uh, with each other. We need to do something about this. But anyway, y'all be cool. I'll talk to y'all in the future. Peace.